Now that we know what a random variable is, let's look at some different types of random variables. So there are two main types of random variables that you will encounter. 99.9% .9 of the ones fall into one of these two cases. And the first one is, so we say a random variable, say x, is discrete if the set x omega is countable. So by this I just mean the set of all the values that x takes as omega ranges over the space. And by countable, I just mean that this set can be written as a sequence, x1, x2, x3, and so on. So it's, it can be counted. It could be infinite, but it's countable. So that's a discrete random variable. And the other main type, a random variable x, has a density. x has a density f, so f is the density, if the CDF, f, the CDF of x, can be written as an integral, the integral from minus to infinity to x, of some, uh, of this function, little f. And that's for any real x, for some for some little f here, oh, and, and uh, it has to be integrable, of course, for this to make sense. So it's just some non-negative function that can be integrated. So that's a random variable with a density. And I should say that technically speaking, this is a Lebesgue integral with respect to Lebesgue measure. Now, don't panic if you don't know what that means. I haven't talked about Lebesgue integration. But there's no need to panic because if you remember, you know, of course you remember the standard Riemann integral from calculus. That's the one that you learn in calculus. And it turns out that whenever the Riemann integral exists, then the then it agrees with the Lebesgue integral. So so most of the time, so most of the time you're going to be fine just thinking about this as a standard Riemann integral. But just keep in the back of your mind that technically speaking it's a Lebesgue integral. Oh, and just to, just to mention a couple examples, so a quick example of a discrete random variable would be the, the number of heads in those five coin flips I talked about earlier. And a example of a random variable with a density would be say the the length of the lifetime of the that light bulb so if that we could we could define a random variable with a density to model that now let me motivate these these two uh, discrete and density type random variables from a measure theoretic perspective so let's uh let's define q to be the distribution of x so remember, this was this thing. Where'd it go? So it's just this thing, px, probability that x takes this value. And q is going to be this. And let j be the set of all real numbers such that q of x is strictly positive. So this is the probability of this single element set. And now we're going to define q sub d of a set, a, to be the measure of a intersect j under q. And we will also define q sub c of a to be the measure of q a minus, so it's just everything left over, q a, q of a minus the measure of a intersect j. So we can just define those functions. And, of course, immediately if we add these together, this cancels and we just get back Q of A. So that means Q equals 
the sum of these, q sub d plus q sub c. So we just have this little decomposition. And this is called, this part, this q sub d, it's called the discrete part. This is measure theory terminology, the discrete part of this measure. And q sub c is called the continuous part of the measure. And this is very natural from a, from the, if you look at the CDF, the CDF has these jumps wherever, wherever you have a value like this in J, so if X is in J, then the CDF is going along here, and boom, it jumps. And everywhere there's not a jump, it's continuous. So you can think of the Q sub D as this, these jumps part of the, of the CDF, and the Q sub C as the, the continuous part, just everything else. So we have this nice little decomposition. And we can further decompose Q sub C into Q sub AC plus Q sub SC. So to do this, I'm going to cite a, uh, I'm not going to prove it or anything, way beyond the scope of this, but I'm going to cite this radon nicotine theorem. So we have this decomposition where Q sub AC of a set interval from minus infinity to little x is just this integral from the same integral as before, du for some integrable function f, just like before. So we have this decomposition, and of course, let me just so just to remind you of remember that this was the fun, the definition of a density. So we had the CDF represented by this integral, and now we have this very similar looking thing here. So you might begin to get suspicious that there is some some coincidence here, some some connection, and in fact there is a beautiful, lovely little fact. So we have the following result. So I claim that if x is discrete, that implies that q, remember q is the distribution of x, equals q sub d, the discrete part. And if x is has a density, That occurs if and only if q equals q sub ac. And also, I should say what these, what this means. So ac, this is called the absolutely continuous part, and sc, this is absolutely continuous. Sc is called the singular continuous part. So we've decomposed q into discrete part. Plus continuous part, we further decompose the continuous part into an absolutely continuous part and a singular continuous part, whatever that means. And the absolutely continuous part satisfies this property. And now I claim that x discrete implies that its measure is just, just the discrete part, so that's nice. And it has a density if and only if its measure is just the absolutely continuous part. Now this, in spirit, so I just wrote the implication this way, in spirit the opposite implication holds. There's a technical detail, just differences on sets of measure zero. But in spirit you can think of this as, as essentially the same thing. So the proof of this, I won't give the proof, but it's, it's not hard. You could prove it. So I'll say proof as an exercise. Not too difficult to prove it, you know, if you're interested in this little fact. So I wanted to, so we have this nice fact to characterize why this 
distinction between discrete and and discrete random variables and random variables with densities is a good one from a measure theory point of view. And I also wanted to explain this in order to give you a warning. So warning. Beware the singular part. So remember, the singular part was this this extra thing hanging out here, this mysterious other part, which was not absolutely continuous or discrete. And, and the reason why this is important is because if the measure of x, the distribution of x, is just this continuous part, that does not imply that x has a density. So this can be a little confusing because sometimes people talk about a continuous random variable. They use the word continuous random variable to mean a random variable with a density. But from a measure theory point of view, using proper measure theory terminology, a, a continuous random variable ought to be one where its distribution is continuous, is the continuous part. But unfortunately, that does not coincide with what people often call a, a continuous random variable which is a random variable with a density. So beware of this, this distinction. And a brief, uh, a quick example of, to, to demonstrate that this, this does not, this implication does not hold, is what's called the, the Cantor function. So the, the classic counter example in all of analysis, the Cantor set, gives rise to what's called the Cantor function which is this, this beautifully mysterious function. And if you take the Cantor function as a CDF of a random variable, then it, is a, it is, has a singular continuous part, but no discrete part and no absolutely continuous part. So, it, so in particular, it has no density and it, it has no point masses.